Hello, beer fans, homebrewers. Ashley here from sexandashbrewing.com, and we are back with another homebrew review. Uh, so a while back, uh, Daryl from the Surly Leprechaun, which is my local homebrew shop, he gave me three hops to try out. Uh, one was Polaris, one was Glacier, and the other one was Calypso. Tonight, we are sampling an IPA I brewed using the Glacier hops. So, um, if you haven't seen any of my homebrew videos, I have a, a string of IPAs that I've been brewing using the exact same malt bill every time, um, same bittering hop every time, and then just switching out all the late edition hops. So um, for this brew, I used uh, Magnum as usual for bittering, just a small charge of it, and then all uh, subsequent additions, we're, we're all using Glacier. So, uh, what do we know about Glacier? Nothing. I've never used it before. But according to hoplist.com, Glacier is a, uh, a dual purpose. So you can use it for bittering and uh, flavor and aroma. Uh, for bittering, or bittering and aroma. Uh, alpha acid is anywhere between 3.3 to 9.7. Uh, the variant that I'm using right now had an uh, alpha acid of 5.1. Um, so, it, uh, the characteristics, it's uh, herbs, wood, and citrus. So, uh, definitely not like one of those uh, Southern Hemisphere New World hops or anything like that. Uh, something a little bit more uh, you know, herbally woody and whatnot. Uh, style guide seems to be good for uh, ESBs, uh, India Pale Ales, Wheat Beers, and American Pale Ales. So, uh, this brew itself uh, was a primarily two row. Um, two pounds of the, this was a one gallon batch, by the way. So, uh, two pounds of two row, uh, 3.2 ounces of Munich 10, and 1.6 ounces of Crystal 30. Um, and then I used a US 05 for the yeast. So, let's get into it. Let's see what we got. And again, thanks again to Daryl for the hops. Greatly appreciated. Let's see what we get. Now, there is one thing I, about this beer. Um, I did do a dry hop edition on this, but life got in the way, and I didn't have the time to do to be bottling it right away. So I think by the time I finally got around to bottling this, it had already it had still been in the, the glass carboy for probably two weeks after dry hopped it. So all of the previous versions of this IPA series, it's all been very, very clear. This one, as you can tell, looks like doo-doo water. So, I think uh, this was the one variable that, that was different, was the length of time after dry hopping to bottling. Um, all of the other ones were, you know, within a few days after dry hopping, I bottled it. This one was the lone exception, so. Um, so what do we got? We got, um, we got a caramel doo-doo water looking IPA, a very thin head. So I think this one, I'm gonna have to check on my, my, priming, sugar cal my priming sugar calculator on this one. Um, it also could have been because it was in the carboy for so long that a lot of that yeast wasn't in suspension. It had fallen all the way down. So, um, so when it came to time to doing the bottle, uh, bottle condition, there just wasn't a, enough viable yeast still, still around to help carbonate. So that may be it too. So very mild aroma. Um, I'm getting some like blueberry vibes from it. Um, and you know, I've, I've, I've not a big fan of blueberry beers or anything like that, but this one definitely does have a sort of blueberry, like soft sweetness to it. But other than that, there's, uh, I think it's my own fault from leaving it in the carboy as long as I did. I think a lot of those flavor of our aromas were just sort of scrubbed away, so to speak. But yeah, just a sort of a lingering sweetness, a little bit of a blueberry aroma. Oh well, let's get into it, see what we got. Cheers. So this one's still pretty medium to light body. Um, this one finished off at um, starting gravity is 10.55 as normal. 10.10 finished off um, final gravity, so 5.8%. This one had an IBU of 75, but this one is um, definitely does not come across nearly as bitter as some of the other ones I've, I've uh, like brewed in the series. But yeah. Very light carbonation, again, more of a priming sugar calculation, sort of missed up there. Sort of a touch of sweetness. Um, definitely get more of a malt presence on this one. Get, get some of that bready biscuitiness from the from the Munich. Um, 
And then, yeah, that, that, that subtle sweetness sort of carries through a little bit. Again, I'm just getting blueberry vibes from it. I'm not really getting any of the descriptors um, that it's supposed to get. Um, I guess if you had to search for herbs and woods and citrus, I guess you could sort of find it. But for me, I'm just not getting it all that much. It's very delicate, though. Um, this would be, you know, if, if I were to use, if I were to use Glacier again, I'd probably be a little bit more aggressive with it, um, to be honest. Um, it'd be interesting to see what, what this would do on a very heavy, like, late, late edition or a very heavy dry hop. I'd be more curious to see if that, like, sort of blueberry sweetness sort of comes through as well. Overall. It's not a bad beer. It's by far not the best beer I've ever made. But there's no brewing faults to it outside of just leaving it in the carboy for too long. I mean, and visually, it's, it's not that great. But uh, <laughs> it, it's doo doo water. Um, but that's home brewing. You know, every batch, you know, you take notes, you learn, um, you apply it to, you know, whatever you learn to the next batch, and you go from there. So, you know, what I've taken from this one is, uh, yeah, if, uh, if you're going to be dropping in that, that, um, that dry hop edition, you better get ready to bottle it within the next few days and you should plan accordingly and not just let it sort of sit around for a little bit. Um, but yeah, so Glacier Hops, uh, maybe this is sort of a revisit type of hop for me. Maybe I should just rebrew this again. I don't know. Anyways, um, that's all I got to say about Glacier. Unfortunately, uh, there's not much else to lend to it. Um, mostly just because of my fault so uh like comment subscribe uh if you if you've used glacier and have had success with it i'd love to hear what you hear what you think about it down below in the comments um other than that yeah hit this that subscribe button um it would be greatly appreciated so again thanks to daryl from the, the surly leprechaun for the hops and until next time home brewers and beer fans cheers